And I will speak today about a genetic basis of congenital anomalies of the kidneys and urinary tract, which is, was the focus of my research for uh, the last uh, several years. As you all know, about 50% of chronic kidney disease in children is caused by congenital anomalies of the kidneys and urinary tract. And this is a very uh, wide spectrum. It includes actually a very wide spectrum of phenotypes among our renal agenesis, multicystic dysplastic kidneys, renal hypodysplasia, hydronephrosis, urethropelvic junction obstruction, zipi urethral reflex, and others. This is a very common condition. It occurs about three to six uh, births uh, per 1,000 live birth, and it accounts for 20, up to 20 to 30 percent of all congenital anomalies. For many years, Kakut wasn't considered to be a genetic uh, disease. Even if you look at textbook 10 years ago, you can see that Kakut is considered to be a developmental uh, condition. And I think the main reason is because most of the Kakut phenotypes exhibit a dominant phenotype with incomplete penetrance and variable expressivity. And some of the affected can actually be unrecognized. Uh, one can be with single kidney and live a healthy life without any symptoms. The hypothesis for monogenic forms of Kakut is um, based on several lines of evidence. First, Kakut has been uh, shown to cluster among families. Around 15% of patients with Kakut will have a relative who also have Kakut. There are several syndromes uh, that are caused by single gene mutations that have Kakut as well, <coughs> is one of their features. They actually have more than 200 syndromic Kakut genes. There are more than 200 monogenic forms of mouse models that have Kakut. And there are specific genes that regulate kidney and urinary tract development and are highly expressed uh, during development. And uh, we think that the basis of Kakut is based on pathologies or gene abnormalities in those genes that govern nephrogenesis. So far, around 37 uh, monogenic forms of Kakut have been already established. Most of the Kakut genes are highly expressed during first stages of kidney development. You can see during the urethric uh, budding, there are many Kakut causing genes that have been described in mice as well uh, as in humans. Our main aim in the lab is to find novel Kakut uh, causing genes with the help of whole exome sequencing and uh, homozygosity mapping and other uh, uh, genotypes methods. And uh, just to tell you a little bit about the lab, the lab is composed of three different groups. One group deals with congenital nephrotic syndrome, one group deals with uh, nephronophthesis, and one group deals with Kakut. Although there are 37 Kakut causing genes, still most of the, pa most of pa of the patients with Kakut will be negative to one of those genes, and 85 or 90% of the cases are still unsolved. This is what leads us to think that there are more genes to be identified in the future. I would like to share with you three lessons that I've learned over the last uh, four years. Uh, and I would like to start with the fact that there is no substitute for both clinical and genetic expertise. And I think, it, in other words, in many cases, the clinical uh, practice can shed light on the genetics and sometimes on the specific mutation. This is a case of a child that I've been following uh, in the general renal clinic in children. He's a seven-year-old boy with, uh, uh, who's been followed for autistic kidney disease, hyperuricemia, and autistic spectrum disorder. When you look at the pedigree, we got like family history, the mother would tell that the uh, father of this child has uh, CKD of unknown cause. He has two other siblings with CKD of unknown cause and the paternal grandmother also uh, has CKD of unknown cause. When we got some more clinical data, it apparently all of them had hyperuricemia. It wasn't clear if it's part of the CKD and low GFR or it's more prominent and uh, indirect. So diagnostic consideration, when one look at this combination of chronic kidney disease, cystic kidney disease, and hyperuricemia, you can think about several uh, possibilities. The first one is Umagene, which leads to uh, medullary artistic kidney disease type two. The other option is HNF1 beta, one of the most common uh, Kakut causing genes. Uh, in some series, is responsible up to three to five percent of the Kakut population. Another option is that this condition can be related to HNF1 beta 
deletion, which can be an isolated deletion of the gene or part of continuous gene deletion where HNF1 beta is deleted in addition to 30 adjacent genes. And this syndrome, actually, of the continuous gene deletion has been described uh, over the last four years to encompass all of those symptoms that we see here, including autistic spectrum disorder. And this is actually what this patient had. And we were able, from looking from the kidney standpoint, also to explain his autism. This is part of a general, uh, a more uh, well-established uh, entity. It's called HNF1 beta-associated disease. Is considered to be a multi-system disorder, uh, which involves mainly the uh, uh, pancreas. It's responsible for MODY type 5, can lead to uh, pancreatic hypoplasia, all kinds of different congenital renal anomalies, elevated liver function tests, which are pretty stable, hyperuricemia, hypomagnesemia, and when it's in the context of this continuous gene deletion, can also lead to schizophrenia in adults or autism in children. As opposed to the first point, I would like to introduce the second point is where genetics shed lights on our clinical judgment. And to show you how whole exome sequencing is a powerful tool for solving clinical mysteries and actually exposing our clinical blind spots. We hypothesize that a lot of non-genetically appearing diseases are recognized uh, to represent single gene disorders, especially recessive disorders uh, that uh, can present sporadically. In recessive disorder, usually the parents are unaffected. If the family has less than four siblings, typically will have, on average, only one affected person. And you need a very high index of suspicion to uh, think that this is a genetic form of disease. So uh, in order to find, initially we thought of finding novel recessive genes, uh, we did the uh, very common approach of looking at consanguineous families. And we collected all our samples of patients were designated as having kakut by their local nephrologist, and in addition were a product of consanguineous marriages. Uh, we performed whole egg, um, homozygosity mapping and all exome sequencing to filter out uh, disease-causing variants. We identified a causative mutation in nine out of the 33 families that we studied, and when we looked back at those genes, we were able to categorize them to two different syndromes. One would be a group of uh, multi-organ syndromes that may include Kakut as one of their features, what we refer as syndromic Kakut, which presented as apparently isolated Kakut cases. And the other group are known primary renal diseases that may manifest as phenocopies of Kakut, and I will give an example from each one of those groups. The first example is a three-year-old girl with vesicoureteral reflex in whom we found that she's harboring a mutation in HPSE2. It's a, a premature stop codon that has already uh, reported previously to be responsible to, for the urofascial syndrome. The syndrome the clinical entity was described in the 60s by Dr. Ochoa. It's called also Ochoa syndrome. Those patients have bladder abnormalities, vesicoureteral reflex, as well as a distorted facial expression with smiling. This is one of the few patients that has been described. There are like less than 10 uh, uh, kids that have been described. The gene was cloned in 2010. There was one more uh, publication in 2011. And then we realized that there is a syndrome uh, that is very specific for this girl. And we, knowing this knowledge, we went back to the uh, referring nephrologist and asked him, do you know if she has distorted faces when she smiles? So he said, you know, she was three years old. I didn't know that asking your patient to smile is part of the physical examination. I will look into that. So of course, she, lost, she was lost a follow-up. She was living in a village five hours away from his clinic. But he uh, was kind enough to send one of his residents to uh, uh, take a picture of her and ask her to, let, to smile. <laughs> and he said, you know, it's the first time in history when I do a home visit only to get a smile from my patient. <laughs> and indeed, this is the girl. In the left, you can see her normal expression. And when she's asked to smile, she has this typical facial uh, grimacing. This, highlights, this example highlights how difficult it could be to find very subtle clinical findings uh, in 
syndromes at the early stages of the syndrome when uh, the syndrome is not a full-blown syndrome which fits any characteristic that we learn in the textbook and also only uh, leads us to a partial expression of the uh, phenotype. As I mentioned, in the second group, we found four individuals uh, uh, in which we identified mutations in genes known to cause non-syndromic kidney disease, which include all those syndromes that are well known to all the nephrologists in the room, and they are also very well known to the different nephrologists that sent us those samples. However, those syndromes were undiagnosed on a clinical basis and were uh, uh, missed. I'm talking about AGXT, uh, mutations called in primary hyperoxaluria, aquaporin 2, which leads to nephrogenic DI, uh, cystinosis gene, and PKHD1. Knowing the genetic uh, uh, pathology, again, we approach the nephrologist and ask them to look for specific clinical findings that fit each one of those syndromes. And in most of the cases, we were, f we were able to find very subtle clues of the original um, syndrome, for example, the uh, patient with aquaporin 2 presented with established CKD had uh, abnormal water deprivation test, and the patient with the PKHD1 mutation had some uh, mild forms of Crowley disease. So I hope I convinced you that in Kakut, rare is common, and we believe that Kakut is uh, composed, is caused by many different rare genetic conditions. And to summarize on conclusion uh, from this project, often rare genetically heterozygous syndromes are very difficult to diagnose, especially at the early disease stages and in patients with non-typical presentation. And diagnosis of the diagnosis of Kakut in the context of existing CKD or ESRD may be very challenging because kids can present with small kidneys that can misinterpret it as being rare congenital renal hypodysplasia. The last point I want to make is to show you how both clinical and uh, the genetic expertise and all exome sequence allows rapid novel gene discovery in order to reveal disease molecular mechanism. So uh, in order to find a novel genes, we investigated a kindred with autosomal dominant Kakut with predominantly involvement of the lower urinary tract. Uh, this patient, I followed this patient, I recruited him actually when I was a second year resident almost 10 years ago in Shiba. He had a stage five, um, grade five uh, VUR, as you can see, and a hydrourator, as you can see uh, at the uh, right image. His family history was also extensive. He had two siblings uh, with uh, different forms of Kakut. His father had Kakut, and uh, two siblings of his father had Kakut. The problem was that both of his grandparents had normal renal ultrasound. So initially, we tried to do linkage analysis. However, you cannot achieve a significant load score with only six affected. And when uh, all exome uh, sequencing was uh, accessible, we exomed all affected uh, patients. Looking at the pedigree, all affected patients share, on average, 3% of their alleles by descent, which typically allows us to uh, filter out many of the hundreds and thousands that each exome uh, results in. However, we still had four variants that we cannot prioritize. So although the grandparents told us that all their siblings have never had any uh, kidney problems, we decided to screen with renal ultrasound all the grandparents' siblings. And as you can see, the grandfather, patient 2-1, had a 60-year-old brother who presumably was healthy. However, when he did renal ultrasound, he was found to have a hypoplastic pelvic kidney. So it was clear that he actually uh, inherited it. He, he probably should have the variant. And by segregation analysis, we were able to further filter uh, uh, the variant to a single variant in the gene known by the name of NRIP1. You can see on the right side uh, um, exon and protein structure of the gene. The mutation uh, abrogates, generates a um, premature subcodon very early at amino acid 93, which abrogates the entire C-terminal of the protein. Very severe mutation. NRIP1, there is some information in the literature about NRIP1, prior information. NRIP1 is a ligand-dependent transcriptional co-repressor, also, again, a transcriptional factor which is involved in most of, which are involved in most of the Kakut causing genes. 
uh, is, is specifically a transcriptional co-regulator for many nuclear hormones, including retinoic acid receptors hormones, and it is recruited that by the presence of an agonist ligand, but acts as a crow repressor. You can see the uh, retinoic acid X receptor and A receptors usually lie on the uh, retinoic acid response elements. Uh, in the presence of retinoic acid, there, are, there is a recruitment of co-activators and uh, which trigger uh, retinoic acid target genes transcription. And at the same time, there is a recruitment of NRIP1, which acts as a negative uh, inhibitor for this pathway. We are very excited because we knew from previous publication that both vitamin A deficiency as well as vitamin A access has been associated with congenital renal malformation. This is the early work from 48 showing that uh, mm, red embryos that were fed with very uh, with vitamin A deficient diet develop uh, renal hypodysplasia or single kidneys, as you can see here. In addition, there was uh, a publication in New England from the 90s where uh, consumption of high vitamin A during pregnancy led to uh, a congenital malformation and one, one could see that one of the main malformations involves the kidney and urinary tract. So we, uh, our next step was to do some in vitro studies and we showed that the NRI plant mutant protein fails to translocate into the nucleus in hex cells. You can see in the upper panel uh, a wild type NRI plant is mainly located in the nucleus while the uh, truncated protein fails to do so. In addition, we showed that the NRIP1 mutant protein does not suppress retinoic acid mediated transcriptional activity. Uh, you can see here, this is a luciferase assay. The construct uh, uh, includes the retinoic acid response elements. And with retinoic acid treatment, there is transcriptional activity, which <coughs> is suppressed when we, when we add NRIP1. However, there is lots of lack of suppression with the mutant protein. Our next step was to look into NRIP1 expression uh, in mouse kidney development, and we did it in collaboration with Andras Kispert from Germany. And NRIP1 uh, showed a specific expression in the lower urinary tract, collecting ducts and ureteral epithelium, peaking at 14.5. And in the lower panel, you can see a uh, kidney explant cultures that was treated with retinoic acid as well as with uh, retinoic acid uh, antagonist, BMC493. And you can see this is the control. With the treatment of retinoic acid, there is overexpression of NRIP1, and with the blockage of retinoic acid, there is a lack of expression of NRIP1. Our final stage was to look at the NRIP1 knockout mice that were out there and have been published 10 years earlier. Their uh, genitourinary uh, malformations, the genitourinary system was never studied, uh, like our, pa our, our patient, actually. And the uh, mice had a very subtle phenotype of uh, problems with ovulation and problems with fat metabolism. When we obtained those heterozygous mice and looked at their genitourinary uh, <coughs> system, we found, as you can see here, two representative examples. We found hypodysplastic kidneys, cysts in the kidneys, hydroureter, uh, and hydronephrosis, which actually established the causality of the gene. To summarize the data, we proposed the following uh, pathomechanism. Uh, without the evidence, without the presence of retinoic acid, NRIP1 is not attached to the retinoic acid uh, complex. With retinoic acid, there is activation of transcription factors that are target genes of retinoic acid. In addition, there is an overexpression of NRIP1, an increase in NRIP1 binding to the retinoic acid uh, receptors, and in turn, there is a negative feedback for the retinoic acid transcription. This loop has been described also in other organs and systems. And we postulated that if you lose the function of retinoic acid, you actually get over transcriptional activation of vitamin A uh, target genes, which mimic vitamin A excess. 
In summary, we uh, discovered that heterozygous truncating mutation in NREP1 is a likely novel monogenic cause of Kakut. The truncating mutation uh, impairs translocation of NREP1 to the nucleus, abrogates interactions with retinoic acid receptor alpha, and fails to inhibit retinoic acid induced transcriptional activity. NREP1 is a negative regulator for retinoic acid dependent signaling. And we speculate that haploinsufficiency of NREP1 could mimic vitamin A access state. This suggests the role of gene environment interactions in the pathogenesis of Kakut. And I would like to end up and end my talk with the clinical implication, back to the patients, about clinical implication of genetic diagnosis that was also previously presented. And I think we have clinical implications to date, although uh, we uh, Sometimes it, it seems neglectable, but there are definitely clinical implications that we need to think about it as clinicians. First, it, uh, genetics provide definitive diagnosis and places the clinical phenotype in, of the syndrome into context. We had patients, for example, who had HNF1 beta uh, mutations, got transplanted from a parent that was carrying the mutation, but apparently had normal kidneys, and developed diabetes following transplantation, or developed elevated liver function test at multiple biopsies without knowing the exit actual cause. But when the genetic diagnosis was made, it was much easier to approach those problems. It enabled precise genetic counseling for family planning with PGD. The next generation, uh, disease in the next generation can be easily avoided. It enables diagnosis of unrecognized affected family, family members, as I showed you in uh, these examples. And it, and it enables unnecessary diagnosis procedures and tests and treatments to be avoided. And finally, it enables early detection of treatments of asymptomatic or subtle extra renal manifestations. And there are several examples that uh, uh, one can think of. For example, patients with HNF1 beta should have monitoring of their magnesium level, uric acid level. Patients with GATA3 mutation should have uh, a monitoring of their hypercalciuria and deafness in, in the family, and so on. There are many, many other examples of very precise personalized medicine that we as nephrologists should look beyond the specific kidney malformation and blood pressure and proteinuria at the patient as a whole. Finally, I want to thank uh, Dr. Frina Mildenbrand, my mentor, and all the members of the uh, Kakut group in Boston, as well as all our uh, collaborators from all over the world who helped us with a lot of function uh, data and send us samples from all over the world. Thank you very much.